Welcome back, everyone. Happy one day before Earth Day. Today we're going to celebrate Earth Day a little early. And you say, well, what is Earth Day? Earth Day was a special day set aside around our Earth, our home, um, in 1970. That's probably way before, like when your grandparents were growing up. <laughs> it was a while ago. And the reason Earth Day was started was to help protect and take care of this fragile yet beautiful, magnificent planet that we call home, the Earth. So today I'm going to read to you a story called A Love Letter to Our Planet, Thank You, Earth, by April Pulley Sayer. And if you can get this book out of the library, please do, because it is an incredibly beautiful, beautiful book. And I'm not sure you can see all of these beautiful pictures, but we have a spider web in the morning dew on a cornflower. And we have Oh, a beautiful bird at the beach, and it says, Dear Earth, and this is a picture taken from up in space, because we see the clouds, and then we see the Earth, and we see the water, the land and the water. It says, Thank you for the water and those that float. An otter and some seabirds. For slippery seaweed, and stone. Thank you for the mountains and the minerals that strengthen bills and bones. Thank you for the air and even fishy whale breath. Thank you for the colors and the coastline and the beach. Look at these seals. And thank you for the tiny little ladybugs. And the towering, this is a magnificent native to Maryland tree called the tulip poplar. And this is, is of course, in the season of fall. For trees and vines that reach, look, here is a sloth. He lives down in South America, and he lives in the trees. And if you go to the Salisbury Zoo, you can see a sloth, if he decides to be out that day. And then the vine creeping up the side of this tree is a, vi a Virginia creeper. Thank you for the curves and the prickles, the parallels and the patterns. We have a succulent called a, chick, a hen and chicks. This is a big cactus. These are little leaf hoppers, and these are baby sea turtles. And shapes that repeat. Look at all those sunflowers. Thank you for the leaves and stems and buds. For plant parts, we can eat. Here we have some oak leaves in the fall. This is a lupin. Here are some carrots and some eggplant. Thank you for the sounds and storms and seasons and for struggles. So we have a goldfinch and we have a storm getting ready to start at the ocean. We have winter and we have a silly little squirrel that looks like he's having a hard time climbing up that pussy willow. And the pale in-betweens. Here's a foggy morning at a lake. We see a heron sitting there in the reflection. The ocean and the fog. And here we have a little bird on the pussy willow 
And even though it's spring and the pussy willow has started to bloom, what do we see is happening? A late snow. Thank you for the rays and the radials and the overlapping greens. Here we have a cone flower with a bee. And this is um, a dandelion that is getting ready to spread its seeds. And here we have some beautiful ferns over top of some hostas. Thank you for those that crawl. Yes, all. 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 Even for those that sting. So we have a crab. We have a caterpillar. We have little ants. We have a spider. And here we have a butterfly, but over here are the ones that sting, and those are the bees. And they only sting you if you're bothering them. Otherwise, they're more afraid of you because you're awfully big. Ah, oh, look at this. Thank you for the sunsets. For sky room, for birds. These are cranes flying. For edges, eyes can roam. This is the side of a mountain cliff. And if you look really hard, maybe you can figure that might be some kind of shape. Maybe the side of someone's face. Thank you for the beginnings and endings and for lifetimes. We have the tadpole, well, the frog or a toad, eggs. And here's a, a jellyfish that has come up and been beached, so it's not going to live because it lives only in the water. Here we have a frog and a rabbit and a duck. Thank you for being our home. And then this is another good reason to get this book out from the library because in the back, the author gives us all kinds of ideas of how we can help the earth. And it um, tells you things that you can do at home, things that you can learn about, um, how to help people in your community, how to ask for help from companies and the government, and then it gives you a whole list of websites that you can go to and find out more wonderful things about our home, the earth.